there we are. Hey, it's me, John Park, and welcome to John Park's Workshop. This is it. Uh, we're going to do this thing, and we're going to do it right now. Uh, welcome. Welcome here to Adafruit. Uh, for those of you who are regular uh, viewers, sorry we were not able to do our show and tell last night. There was a bunch of goof-ups with the... Uh, Google Hangouts worldwide, apparently. So that doesn't sound fun for them. Someone's dealing with that today, I'm sure. Um, but we'll be back on that next week, doing our best to bring people on to show and tell their cool projects. Uh, so let's get started. First of all, I want to mention our jobs board. We have the Adafruit jobs board at jobs.adafruit.com, and it's a great place to go and check out some cool positions that are open and also to post your own uh, skills and resume if you're looking for some work. Uh, in fact, give me one second. I'm going to fix this uh, black hole that I've just created here and instead pop you over into my browser so that I can show you a particularly cool posting that I thought was A-OK. -okay. Let's see. Should be that one there. And... We'll come back to that later, but there we go. So that is a posting that's on the Adafruit Jobs Board, and it is a payment for simple coding job. Someone is looking for some contract work uh, to help with a pan and tilt device with a laser pointer on it, which sounds extra fun and cool using the PSP joystick, little thumbstick, mini, mini pan and tilt kit. Uh, so if someone's looking to pick up some contract work, that looks like an excellent opportunity right there. Uh, and if we Back out a step, you can see there's all sorts of other cool stuff. Someone's looking for gyroscopic sensor for performance. We saw that last time. Uh, makerspace at a school in Washington, D.C. All kinds of great stuff. So uh, the cool thing about the Adafruit Jobs Board is that it is entirely free to post your job positions that you're looking to hire for and to post your own info if you're looking to get hired. So please go check out the uh, Adafruit Job Board, would you? And uh, the next thing I'd like to mention is... We have a coupon code. If you want to go to the store and pick up some goods, then uh, get, get yourself 10% off. You can use this code, Arpeggio, and that'll get you 10% off in the store today on all the goods that you want. No subscriptions or software or gift certificates, but on actual physical stuff, go for it. And uh, that is my, my cue to segue into my product of the week because uh, you might want a suggestion on something cool to go and get in the store and uh, here's a suggestion for you and that is the heat shrink tube pack. So uh, I believe we have a couple of these uh, on the Adafruit store. I'm going to open up my browser again and uh, show you this one and I have a particular reason that I thought this was a good pick for the week. Uh, it actually comes in a few different sizes. So there's these, uh, there's four each of a few different sizes. There's these big daddy ones and the medium daddy ones and then these sort of more normal daddy ones. Uh, and I found a very cool use for uh, the, I think it was the quarter inch tubing. And that is to wrap it around a wooden dowel and heat shrink it to make my own uh, replacement hinge filler for my uh, Game Boy Advance macro that I built from a DS Lite. In fact, um, I'll pop you over here to have a look at it. Ooh, that's a, that's a preview from our mailbag, so ignore that for a second, but check out this guy right here. This is my Game Boy Advance that I built from a uh, DS Lite. So the regular DS and the DS Lite both have a hinged lid on them. Here's the original. Uh, so I got this used, I think, for $11 or something like that. I think this was the one I showed last week on the mailbag. Uh, so I've removed the screen on this and popped the uh, speaker out of that screen and into the body here, removed the touch screen on it, thanks to some advice from Joe Bleeps. And uh, you can see here, these play Game Boy Advance games natively. Uh, but boy, do they play them beautifully because look at that bright backlit screen unlike the actual Game Boy Advance. Um, so one of the issues here, however, is that there is a big gap left when you remove this top screen and that hinge. And so I took uh, some of our heat shrink tube and a wooden dowel. Let me show you over here 
back at my workstation what I did. Uh, so there we go. There is, I think those are the smaller sizes. That's actually what I used, and I could have gone down a size smaller. Uh, so that's some heat shrink tube, and that's a little wooden dowel, and I just cut that dowel to the proper length to fit in there, and then heated that up, and it has a nice rubbery matte finish, just like the DS. So it's a, an excellent match. Um, so that is why I have picked that as my product of the week. And you can, of course, find lots of great actual um, on-label uses for it, like heat shrinking to uh, create an insulation for some spliced wires, for example. Um, but I find other uses for it, so there's one of them. Uh, and let's see. So that is my, my product of the week. And uh, what I'd love to do is pop into this. Okay, so for the Make Code Minute today, what I'd like to look at in Arcade is creating music for uh, your Pi Gamer or Pi Badge using Make Code Arcade. And what I've got here, you can see I've got my Pi Gamer with a little uh, custom screen I made that looks like a keyboard. And what I'm doing is creating little arpeggios. Uh, and so these arpeggios, I'm going to actually plug in a speaker uh, so that you can hear this. Let me turn this up. You'll have to let me know if that's too loud. Um, so what I'm doing is when I move the uh, D-pad or joystick in different directions, I'm going to play different little arpeggios. And here's one I got on the button. Okay, and so the reason I'm doing this is that it's a really nice way of mimicking some of the earlier game systems that couldn't play polyphony, which is multiple notes at once. And so instead of playing and holding a chord, what you would do is play notes rapidly in an arpeggio. It's like a broken chord uh, so that you get the feel of the chord, but you're only playing a single note at once. And so the way I'm doing this inside of Make Code is... You can see I'm creating some functions that are uh, representative of playing these different arpeggios. So I've got uh, actually a function for each note. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And the reason I'm doing this is a little more complicated than, than the usual playback is I also want to do these graphics. So if we pop up the image there, you can see that we're playing uh, the notes and we're also playing the, the uh, piano keys by popping up different graphics. Uh, and then I've created my functions to call all those notes to create a major scale. And then here's all that's happening when I hit these uh, buttons. When I press the up button, I'm setting my tempo because I actually wanted to change these uh, per uh, function that I'm calling. And then I'm simply calling the F, A, C, and then no note, which I'm using just to turn off the graphic. And so I've got uh, this, these, these triads for uh, a C chord, a D, and so on, so that you can play these uh, just by pressing buttons. And then I also created that arpeggio that um, a lot of people know from Stranger Things, which is what happens when I press the A button. So uh, if we go back to this here, you can hear them again. And so that's a simple way that you can create arpeggios inside of Make Code Arcade and then play them in the browser or on your Pi Gamer or Pi Badge hardware. And uh, so since I thought that was kind of a cool... Um, little demo. I want to dive into this a little more than we have time for with our Make Code uh, Minute, but it's also going to lead into our project because it's one of the things that I wanted to do to plus um, the quality of a game, how to bump up the, the, the level of polish and finish on a game of yours, and one of them is, is to use music. Um, and so you'll find that even if you go back to some of the Make Code um, for Circuit Playground Express projects that I did doing music on the, on the Circuit Playground Express a little while ago, um, 
myself and, and almost anyone I know who's tried to do much involving music on uh, make code it finds very quickly that the easiest thing to do is to create little loops and to create uh, functions and then call those functions and maybe call loops within those functions so that you're not just creating one straight ahead mountain of notes because there's usually repetition and there's usually chords you want to come back to. Um, also looking at this a little bit closer, uh, let me hide that for a second and we'll just look at the make code. You can see um, the way that I'm uh, setting up these uh, graphics is that I've got a background image that is of a piano keyboard and then I've created uh, these individual keys as an array of sprites. So um, this is something you'll find inside of the arrays section of Make Code Arcade. There's a set a sprite list um, or rather, uh, sorry, sorry, I think it's this one, set this list, yeah, this first one, set list to an array of, and, it's, and it defaults to having integer numbers in there, but you can actually drag in um, sprite gallery images. So I have these three uh, kind of pressed key, like the shadowed keys, and you can see here when I restart this, it um, plays those notes, or when I'm hitting A, it's playing those notes. Uh, and the way that's working is it's picking one of these three graphics, and then I've set values of X translation. So you can see when we're pressing the E key, it moves this graphic over to 34 on X. Um, and then that same uh, key, which is that right key, gets used again on a B somewhere in here. Uh, so you can see I'm moving that over to 86 and it's grabbing that same key. Um, so that is uh, some of the basics there. The other thing I want to do is just demonstrate, let me plug in, I've got a, a MIDI keyboard that I can plug into my computer. I've got actually a laptop down here to not conflict with my broadcast machine. And let's see, we should be able to hear this. Can you hear that? Yes. Uh, so here's a, this is poly has polyphonic sound, so I can play chords. kind of the effect that we're going for with the arpeggio, but what we, what we end up doing is these rapid and on that last one what I'm doing is I'm actually instead of uh, arpeggiating up from the C I'm heading down from the G, which kind of lets us settle into the root of the, of the chord there. Um, so that uh, is the effect that I'm going for here with this. Now let's, let's take a look at expanding our um, skills inside of Make Card Arcade for creating a, a completed game. So what I'm going to do is let's swap over to a different Make Code Arcade session. Uh, now this is a game, this is a kind of collaboration between myself and Lady Ada. She created this game and the logic for it and a lot of the graphics and then she asked me to polish it up. So I'm, I'm adding in some uh, splash animation at the beginning, kind of like a title thing, a, an actual title um, card to it, a uh, background music as well as some animation for our main character and uh, I'm going to use the lights that are built into the um, Pi Gamer, the NeoPixel strip of five, to indicate my lives that are um, that my character has. And each time I lose a life, that that uh, pixel bar will flash and will drop down one uh, one fewer NeoPixel that's lit up. So how about we take a look at the default state of the game? So here's pretty much the game as as I originally was um, shown it. So it says, your first day at DigiKey, help get the orders out by packing components up. Make sure to follow the order to get it perfect. Nothing extra or missing. So uh, first of all, there are some components we'll look at that allow you to display prompts, text prompts that need to be read, and then the player has to hit A to get past them. And now it says a new order came in for one resistor, one capacitor, and one diode. So I'm going to hit A to start, and then if I move the d-pad, we can move the character around and uh, for some reason there's a lag with my keyboard trying to play this. Um, so each, what do I need now? I need, oh, I've lost a life because I got something I didn't need, but there we go. So I'm down to 
one life, you can see the one heart there, uh, and that, um, since I completed the order, uh, now it takes me on to the next level, and so on. So what I decided to do with this, first of all, um, Lamore asked me to give it a background. So you can see it's just on white right now. I think that was the color it was when, when she gave it to me. Um, so what I decided to do was create a fancier background. So let's take a look. Um, let's see, I gotta add, I'm gonna add a, give me one second here. I'm gonna add in a screen capture of a sprite. So that's the, the uh, pixel art program I decided to use for this. So. Let's pick a new window capture. And I'm going to grab a sprite. Okay. Okay, so there's a sprite, and let me go over to uh, there. Okay, so this is what the background I came up with looks like. So it's kind of this factory thing. Uh, and you can see, as I, I zoom out, you when you're working on this, you kind of need to think about the size that you're going to see it at. It might look strange real big, but I, I like to keep an eye on this little preview window over here, even if I'm up close working on stuff I can see in my little window, uh, a little better representation of what it's gonna look like and, and small changes can make a big difference. Um, so actually, let's talk about the evolution of this. When I first, uh, the first thing I did actually is I thought, okay, I'd like to have like a factory warehouse kind of feel and I wanted to get reference. I went over to, uh, let me open up my browser. I went over to Itch.io which is itch.io. Itch.io is a place where pixel art people uh, post different um, pixel art packs of things that they're either selling or giving away for free. Uh, I ended up paying for this because I used it, but it's, a, it's a, available for use for commercial or non-commercial work. Um, it's licensed, so you can use it. And I used this for inspiration. So you can see this is a, um, if you see this little GIF here going by, I don't know if I can make that a bit bigger. Beautiful graphics. He's also got some parallax scrolling going between levels, some stuff that's more sophisticated than what we're going to do, but I liked some of these ideas of this industrial artwork. So um, I downloaded and let's see, here you can see if I go back to A Sprite, what I did was I adapted uh, this one. So I started, that's a piece of uh, art from that uh, set, and what I did was I have a limited palette. I have 15 colors plus transparency that I can use. Um, so I adapted that into something kind of like this. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. So this is, I repeated that and I grabbed that motif of these sort of bricks up here. Uh, and originally I think I had put some bright uh, turquoise, kind of teal, I love teal, little teal lines around here. Uh, and what I found is that kind of popped out. So what I wanted to have is this feel like a background that's muted, so there's low detail. Uh, it's really everything is kind of in silhouette. Um, and so I ended up removing those. I also darkened up this. So you can see it's, it's this kind of weird checkerboard, but at smaller scales, it ends up looking like a sort of darker teal than what we have available. So this is a trick for getting away with um, filling things with checkerboard patterns is a good way to reduce the sort of brightness and value of something, even if you don't have a lot of colors to work with. Um, and then you can see I did the same thing for these. I wanted to knock this even further in the background, so it kind of sh gives that a shadow, but I don't have another color to work with that, that would work there. Um, and so I could have gone black, but that made it kind of too high contrast. So I made it this checkerboard pattern. Um, and then I wanted to put this into the uh, background of, of the game. So the question is, how the heck do you do that in Make Code? This is our, uh, let's see, let me go here. This is our pixel editor that we have to work with. So if I look in, let's see, I gotta find it in here. Somewhere in the level setup, or, okay, here it is. It, just in my um, on start block, I've got 
this little tiny window to work with. So there's no way I'm going to create that artwork inside of this little tiny window, uh, which is 160 pixels by 120 pixels, but I got very little, you know, every little mouse wiggle counts, and it would be very hard to, to paste it in here. Um, so I'm writing a guide about this that'll show you the details of it, but the, the short version of this is there is an unofficial make code asset tool created by one of the members of the make code team that allows you to import a PNG graphic, portable network graphic file, and it will convert it into the um, asset format that's used if you look in make code's uh, JavaScript section. I'll pop over here. And let's look, I'm going to see, can I zoom that up? Yeah, let me zoom that up a lot bigger. So I'm going to look here for my on start block. Uh, da, da, da. Where are you? I've lost it, missed it. Hold on. Going back around. Box and um, sprites, sprites, sprites. Startup music. It's not in a knit level, is it? No. Make sprites. Is it this one? Startup animation? Uh, I think that's a different one, but okay, you get the idea, right? This is what your, I'm going to zoom way out here. This is what your pixels look like representing each pixel as well as, actually the Adafruit logo, you can see it there, as well as their color from the index. So remember we have this, the 15 colors plus transparency to pick from. Um, so by swapping my graphic into this mode and then pasting it into here, I can uh, avoid having to paint inside of that very, very tiny little window. Uh, which means that I can also do animation that way. So um, another thing I decided to add was uh, animation. And so again, let's pop over to uh, a sprite here. And for my box, instead of a static box, what I decided to do is create a little um, three frame animation. So again, it looks kind of weird when you're zoomed way in, but imagine it's about that big on screen, something like that. And so you can see I just wanted a little sort of squash and stretch wiggle. So we start uh, with the regular box dimensions. And then when it receives the component, it kind of squishes taller and sucks its sides in a bit. And then it flattens and widens down and then it returns. So it's just a little bump uh, kind of look. Um, and I'm going to show you that on the hardware itself rather than my uh, simulator screen because I think you'll be able to see it better. Um, so that was two things. So I have a better background. I have some animation uh, of my uh, DigiKey box. And let's see, I've added music. So let's look back in make code. Um, we looked at this in the make code minute, but if I take a look here, uh, I've got a couple of different instances where I'm going to add music. I'm going to add music to the intro. So let me zoom in to here. And uh, I'm just checking my chat to make sure people can hear me. Good. People are still seeing and hearing. Excellent. Um, so what I've done is I've actually made myself a before and after. So I can turn on and off some of these um, sections. So I'm going to add this startup animation. And I'm going to add turning on my background. And while I'm at it, let's turn on the creation of the NeoPixel strip and setting those to, uh, whoops, to lilac at first and then to represent the number of lives I have. Uh, and I'm also going to turn on animation. So, oh, here's my music. Okay, so uh, what I have is a forever loop of a little arpeggio playing. And this time I decided to play, I'm rolling up those, uh, a couple little chords. Um, but I'm also playing every note in octaves. So I have a middle C and a high C. Middle G, high G, middle E, high E, middle G, high G. So we get this uh, little bloop, 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 bloop kind of arpeggio happening for every note. So I'm going to allow that background music to play here. And then I've also got my uh, animation. So let's, we've looked at uh, animation before as its own separate thing. So now you can see we're integrating it into uh, the full uh, package. So let me see if I can find it. That's always the challenge once you get moderately complex scenes. Uh, 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 in my animation block, I also have a 
a true false statement to decide if we're playing all frames of the animation or not. Let's see, where did you go, animation? Where are you hiding? I don't see it here. Is that it? No. I've lost it entirely. Oh, there it is. So here is my function that creates the animation. I'm just going to turn this to true. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a bounce animation and I'm also creating an idle animation. Um, there may be a better way to do this, and I'm, I'm reaching out to some people uh, on the Make Code Arcade Discord about that. But actually, let's let's play this now. So you won't hear the sound with it, but you can see I've created this sort of splash screen, and we also have a little uh, chase scene, kind of like a Pac-Man intro that uh, Lady Ada created of the DigiKey logo and AdaBot. And then we're using this built-in titling thing. So if I look in, uh, let's see, is that in scene? It's in game. So if I look in game, we have a splash. And so if you create a splash animation, it will allow you to create two lines or just one line, and the uh, player has to hit A to get past it. And it even does this cute thing of if you've written too much, it just does a little side scroll for you to, to show the words that uh, would have wrapped too far. Uh, so I'll hit A. And now it gives us that same message as before. And now you can see I've got my background. And you'll see the nice little cute animation that helps the player know that they've actually touched uh, the component. Oops, game over, because I, I crashed too many times into components I didn't need. Uh, so let's look at this on uh, the actual hardware. Let's switch over to here and, sorry, other one I'm going to plug in. This is my Pi Gamer in the lovely um, case that Phil B made, laser cut case. Let's turn that on. I actually don't need that plugged in. And we'll hit reset. Okay, so it plays my little song. Then we have our little chase. Uh, it's looking pinker on my screen than it is. We get a little startup sound, get our title, and we'll hit A. And now you're going to see we'll get our little song. I'll avoid boxes for now just so we can hear the song. And you can tell we do have polyphony. Uh, also, notice my little red lights at the bottom. So those are going to flash when I crash into a component I'm not supposed to get. So right now, I don't need any capacitors. Oh no, so you can see those flashed and reduced down. So this same number of hearts that I have uh, for lives is represented down here in this bar. So you can use that for a lot of different things. You could flash it a happy color uh, when you hit a, uh, a component that you do want. And we'll restart it there just so we get on this uh, happy little logo. Um, so, yeah, Andy Calloway in the chat. Why am I thinking Frogger? It definitely has a Frogger feel uh, to it. And, uh, um, you know, there's, there's a lot you can do with it. The, um, the guide I'm writing, I'm going to talk about how to add these enhancements to the game. The game will also be in there, um, so you can download it and take a look at it. And if I have time and the brain power for it, I will also try to dissect how the game logic uh, works. But I haven't looked that closely at it. Um, what you will notice, uh, since uh, Lady Ada wrote this, I didn't write the game. The uh, game does things like uses some random functions to decide how many components you need of each type for each round, uh, as well as a few other clever things like that to keep it uh, interesting. And one of the best parts is you can head on over to um, Make Code and make changes to it. You can decide you want five lives uh, so that you can play a little longer or maybe more. Um, that'll, that'll probably mess with my NeoPixel code if you pick more lives than I have NeoPixels, but uh, you can adjust that or maybe plug in one of these really big um, NeoPixel strips and give yourself like 30 lives. That would be kind of funny uh, and that should work just plugging, um, plugging your NeoPixel strip into the bottom of the Pi Gamer there into one of the uh, JST ports. So. Um, just some, some of the very, uh, just very few uh, things that you can imagine doing uh, once you unlock the uh, secrets of plussing your video games with extra stuff. And so there's, there's an idea of uh, using imported graphics, uh, some animation, as well as music uh, and uh, a little splash screen animation to uh, up your level, go to the next level with your games. Um, so 
before I go, let's um, take a look back at our coupon code of the day, which is Arpeggio, and that's going to get you 10% off in the store. So please, uh, if you're thinking of getting some stuff, go get some stuff and pay less for it with that coupon code. There's also some uh, excellent bonuses. If you spend enough in the store, you get free things. I don't know what the exact ones are right now, but sometimes that's a free Permaproto board or a pin. Uh, depends on what we've got uh, going on right now. But if you get up to beyond certain thresholds, and it'll tell you uh, as you're packing your cart full of good stuff that you can get free things. And, uh, and that's always nice. So uh, that is it. That is the show for today. Thank you for stopping by John Park's workshop. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, please keep an eye out on the social media and the learn guide for the, uh, the learn guide for this, taking your video games to the next level to come out. And uh, I will see you all next week. Thank you so much.